I think most people would rather have a complete product instead of one you had to assemble. Legos are the fun exception. Furniture is the frustrating requirement, especially if it's from IKEA. With audio gear, you almost always buy a product that is pre-built. Every once in a while, you may stumble across a product that you can solder and build to your liking. The KDES Tone Board is an interesting middle ground between pre-assembled product and user-modifiable component in a larger setup. I got the KDES Tone Board with an acrylic case. I don't need any more DAX, but this thing has gotten great reviews and I was rather curious about its performance. The price of the Tone Board varies from $70 to $80 and higher depending on bundles. Is the tone board relevant in a market saturated with dozens of topping SMSL shit and iFi products? When you buy the tone board with or without the acrylic case, you get a PCB with all components pre-assembled. You don't need to solder anything. In fact, you can take that PCB and plug it directly into your computer using a USB cable. The board gets its power and data from a single USB-C port. There's a SPDIF jack for input or output, and there's an RCA connection that outputs to VRMS. The board is very well made. I didn't see any leftover solder or chipped components. Everything seems to be solidly placed. The board has expansion slots as well. There's a 40-pin header, an OLED slot, and an 8-channel external slot. The idea is that if you wanted to build your own DAC with a screen and additional components, you could do that. You can buy those extra components from Cadis or third parties. The tone board uses the ESS ES 9038Q2M DAC. This is one of the latest offerings in the DAC market, and a lot of products using it cost hundreds of dollars. The board is plug and play, as I said. Cadis says that you may need to download the Tessicon drivers for Windows, but my Windows 10 machine immediately recognized the tone board after I plugged it in. The board is compatible with all popular operating systems, including Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu. Use with mobile devices is not recommended and likely won't work. iOS does not allow the tone board to get power. My LG V30 also did not send power to the board. Consequently, neither devices actually worked with the tone board. Maybe someone knows how to bypass power settings on Android and could make the tone board work on another Android device. But as far as Apple mobile devices are concerned, you cannot pair the tone board to them. Overall, the tone board is built quite well. The acrylic case that it came with was also fairly sturdy. You can find these cases for around 10 bucks alone if you wanted to or make your own. Assembly of the board into the case is a little time consuming but straightforward. The end result is not pocket friendly, but its footprint is pretty small. Overall, the build, I think, is pretty great. Cadis doesn't really say what the sound signature of the board is supposed to be. They do say that the board is professionally tuned and audiophile approved. To test the sound signature, I paired the tone board to the Shit Magni 3 Heresy. I used the Aventone Planar and played music over Amazon Music HD. The Heresy is a fairly neutral amplifier. The Planar is one of the two most neutral headphones I have ever heard. The Planar has a sub-bass roll-off, and I paid particular attention for any alteration that the tone board might apply in that regard. As a test group, I also paired the Heresy to the SMSL Sanskrit Mark II and tried to compare for differences. The Sanskrit is a neutral DAC. I listened to several bass-heavy tracks including Mountains, Conquer, Pure Water, New Patek, Reel It In, Uproar, Bim Bam Smash, and Irodori. The goal was to identify the overall bass performance, whether I could notice any distortion or if the bass was noticeably altered. Because the Heresy is a reasonably neutral amplifier, it adds negligible, if any, sound alterations for the planar. As I said before, the planar has a sub-bass roll-off. This character is present when the Heresy is plugged into any other neutral DAC, including the Songcause LAQXD1, the SMSL SU8, and Topping E30. I noticed a very slight sub-bass elevation with the tone board. It appeared that the planar had slightly more obvious sub-bass rumble on the tone board than on the Sanskrit. The difference was not significant. Instead, what I heard was just a tiny bit more sub-bass and slightly more sub-bass and mid-bass melding. Only close listening and A-B tests showed this. Mid-bass impact seemed very similar to the Sanskrit. 
In other words, it appears to be accurate with natural decay. Drum strikes resonate without distorting and are not harsh. Overall, I think that the tone board's bass is close to neutral. I believe I heard a marginal bass emphasis compared to the Sanskrit. I did not change volume between switching from one DAG to the other and did not adjust the headphones, so the minor sound difference is likely due to the tuning. To test the mids, I listened to vocal-centric tracks from pop, folk, dance, and acapella. The planar has neutral, smooth mids when paired with neutral sources. I am happy to say that the tone board did not alter the mid sound signature of the planar. As I switched back and forth between the Sanskrit and the tone board, I noticed no differences. Vocals were clear and full. Timbre of mid-centric instruments was correct. Decay seemed also correct. A few of the songs in my test playlist have natural grain and sibilance. The planar keeps these details neutral. The tone board in the mix? Well, that experience remained exactly the same. Both male and female vocals were smooth. Guitars and pianos always sounded true. In short, the mids response of the tone board appears to be neutral. Treble response is where I heard the biggest difference between the tone board and the Sanskrit. The tone board has a slightly reduced treble presentation compared to the Sanskrit's neutral offering. I listened to Scherzo for X-Wings, Flight from the City, Take 5, and a number of orchestral pieces. There are two takeaways. First, instruments always sounded full. Horns, brass, trumpets, saxophone, cymbals, timpani, every single instrument had an appropriate amount of decay and natural timbre. Nothing sounded thin or shrill or shouty. The second takeaway is that there is a noticeable decrease in some treble energy. Saxophones, horns, brass, and cellos tend to have a smoother, less energetic presentation than on true neutral sources. The difference is not night and day, but it is perceptible. Indeed, the Sanskrit by comparison demonstrated marginally more energy to brass and horn instruments. On the Sanskrit, these instruments tended to cut through the mix like hot knife through butter. On the tone board, these instruments melded slightly more with other instruments and did not pull ahead in their respective tracks. In other words, although I could hear horns and brass and cellos, it was a little harder to hear those instruments on the tone board than on the Sanskrit. Imagine listening to your speakers, then applying a thin cotton sheet in front of them. The cotton will absorb some of the sound energy. This is the analogy I would apply here. As I said before, the tone board's marketing does not say what its sound signature is supposed to be, and I do not think it is actually neutral. There seems to be a marginal bass emphasis. Mids seem neutral, and treble, I think, is rolled off. This is a pleasant sound, a balanced sound, if you will. Those who like a bit more bass might be happy. Those who are very trouble averse might enjoy the tone board's smoother presentation. I think the treble is more significantly different from the Sanskrit than the bass is. In other words, the bass response is pretty close between these two DACs, but treble is more neutral on the Sanskrit. Now, some might say that the Sanskrit has a more accurate sound, and maybe that's true but the tone board may have a more pleasant one. It just depends on what you're looking for. It used to be that Sabre DACs were harsh and grainy and cringeworthy. I have returned many Sabre products in the past because of this. However, the newer implementations of Sabre DACs has changed my mind. The ES9038Q2M is used in a number of products that I have tested, and this list includes the Songcause LAQXD1, Dragonfly Cobalt, Topping NX4, and Earman TR Amp. Except for the TR Amp, all of these other products have a neutral sound signature. The TR Amp is more analytical and a bit harsh in my opinion. The tone board sits pretty comfortably with the Songcause, Cobalt, and NX4. I think these products have a bit more treble energy, but otherwise sound similar to the tone board. And remember, I said similar, not the same. The tone board does not exhibit any distortion or audio abnormalities. Those who put a lot of emphasis on measurements should be appeased with the tone board's performance. The tone board is not a good proposition for most. It simply does not offer anything for the average consumer. Think about it. For about the same price, you could buy either the SMSL Sanskrit or Topping E30. Both of those products are pre-assembled with LCD screens, remotes, and sturdy construction. 
For a bit more money, you could get the iFi Zendak. There's nothing wrong with the tone board, mind you. It performs perfectly well. I think that the tone board is only for two groups, those who are seriously dedicated to this hobby and those who want a significant upgrade to a PC sound card. If you're dedicated to this hobby, then you may enjoy the DIY nature of the tone board. If you have a 3D printer at home, you can fashion your own case, for example. If you're good at tinkering, you might be able to turn the tone board into a portable DAC. And if you're inclined to experiment, you could probably make the tone board into a beastly all-in-one amp DAC. Those who build PCs may find that the tone board is quite useful. This is particularly the case for small form factor computers and Ubuntu systems. But for everyone else, I wouldn't say that the tone board is a must buy. This brings us to value. The fact is that the tone board is a perfectly agreeable product. It does nothing wrong and in fact offers quite smooth sound. Whereas the Earman TR amp is harsh and grainy, the tone board is smooth and gentle. It's like opposite sides of a coin. I try to think of alternative DACs in this price range that sound exactly like the tone board. I don't think there is anything, at least nothing that I have heard. The tone board's smooth treble presentation is fairly unique to it, I think. And I've said before, it is not a significant departure from alternative products, but the difference is perceptible upon A-B testing. The idea that you have to build your own case for the tone board is, well, cute. It's not exactly rocket science to put pre-built but ready to be assembled cases together. It's a straightforward operation. Value in this situation depends entirely on what you want. Do you want immediate gratification or do you want the tinker? If you want no fiddling, then buy an SMSL or topping alternative. If you want to modify the tone board, tinker with add-ons and make it your own project, then the tone board is a fantastic product. This is not for the average audiophile. But if you are thinking of stepping into the serious hobbyist game where you jerry-rig your own components, then the tone board is an easy first step into that black hole. Let me put it this way. Having experienced the tone board's performance, I am intrigued and eager to experiment with the add-ons. The fact that I can go to the Cadis website and buy a cooling fan, touchscreen, battery mod, cellular receiver modules, and all sorts of other things means I can make the tone board as simple or as complicated as my wallet and patience will allow. There is no other audio product that I know of that permits such freedom. That in itself is impressive. The tone board and its accessories and mods are not cheap. You could easily sink a ton of money into the tone board as if you're on an episode of Trick My Ride. So the bottom line is that the tone board is not value for the majority of people. You can get more for the same amount of money with topping and SMSO. But the tone board is excellent value for anyone who wants to build their own monster DAC. I'm not talking about the bare bones kit, which includes the DAC in a case. I'm talking about the ability to add all sorts of different boards and modules and batteries and screens. I don't know how large the DIY audiophile market is, and it's probably significantly smaller than the DIY computer market. But those who are inclined to build their own gear, tinker with what they have, the tone board is a brilliant option. I know there's a new version of the tone board, which costs I think around $200. I'd love to get my hands on that to test and compare. The $200 variant is a headphone amplifier as well and decodes MQA. It is very eye-catching, and maybe Cadiz or a seller can send me one in the future. But until then, I think that the standard version of the tone board is a fun, effective DAC. If you want to try your hands at tinkering, I think you may be pleasantly surprised with the tone board. <laughs>